Bienvenue à Comment gagner de l'argent et comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus avec Glendon Cameron. What is the best thing to do? Is Craigslist still a good hustle? Storage Sharks is still a good hustle? eBay, Amazon, all of these things. What's the best one? What should I do? Everything that I just mentioned, there's someone right now at this moment making a shitload of money doing that very thing. It's not the hustle. It's the person behind the hustle. You have got to wrap your mind around your abilities and stop looking at what other people are doing. When I got in the storage auction business, it was commonly, commonly believed that storage auctions were not the way to make a full-time living. Guy told me, he's like, you seem to be doing pretty good there, you know, with those units and stuff. That's a good unit. If I had a little bit more money, I would have gave you a run for your money. Ha <laughs> ha. But don't, don't make this a full-time living thing. It, it'll break your heart. It just break your heart. And I said, thank you. And I went on to make it a full-time living. The thing is, if there are many people doing whatever you're doing and they're saying, this is hard. I can't make enough money. I don't have enough sales. I guarantee you, you look up under the skirt, you're going to see some panties with some holes in them. The holes will be in the infrastructure is too small. They don't really buy the proper items. There are so many variables that go into why seller A is making money and seller B is losing his shirt. And it goes back to experience, expectations, and a belief in self. I mean, I'm sitting there. I was making more money per week on eBay than some folks are making per month here in 2014 who are busting their asses. And I look at it, and I watch videos of people, and I listen to what they say, and I can tell. It's like, you haven't gotten there yet. Because if you are pushing your business, there's certain things that's gonna happen. Number one, you're gonna realize at some point that what you're doing isn't gonna get you where you wanna be. At that point, you're either gonna leave that business, or you're gonna find, or you're gonna start to implement procedures, policies, whatever you need to do to make that business the vehicle for your destination. I have seen only a handful of people who really figured out Amazon and eBay is not their business. I would hear all kinds of like, hey, this is great. And I got a question for you. And this is something that I always say to people who want to challenge me. And I'll do it in public. I'll email them or stuff. It's like, okay, since that's what you believe, are you willing to bet your mortgage on it? And I don't hear nothing because it's very easy to say, hey, this is good or hey, this is going to work out. I bet my mortgage on my business advice. The stuff that I tell you is the stuff that I use in my business. I bet the mortgage. Uh, I bet, yeah, I'm putting my wallet where my mouth is. If a person will tell you X, Y, and Z and they are one don't show any appreciable signs of success <laughs> to that that when you start getting real specific on like okay how does this work because I'm telling you I have seen so many people flip-flop on this thing and I've been consistent with eBay since I've been on YouTube because I went through it and unfortunately many of you are going through it and there are many of you who are not touched who will go through it it's it's a it's a strange thing it's a strange thing but the real deal is you make your hustle shine. It's up to you. I don't care what it is. Uh, I have people in the writing community who think I'm nuts because I'm really working on creating my own publishing empire that is a be beyond e Amazon, uh, iPhones, because it's like, oh, you know, you get great distribution, which is true. If you're discovered, if people know you're there, if you're not there, you don't do anything, or you're not well known to have a following, being on all those sites is really going to diffuse your success. I know someone who has, who's a writer, who's doing very well, and the only place they have their books is Kindle. They don't have them anywhere else. But this person listened to me, and this person went to work and put out 25 books in the last two years. Now, every month, 
the checks just come in because they built something, which goes back to your hustle or whatever you want to do. Mistake number one, I'm going to go in it with no skin in the game. Everyone tries to do this stuff with the least amount of money possible in case things go wrong. On the surface, it's very smart. On the experience level, it's very stupid because you're not going to get that experience. You could put your big toe in the water for you know all day long testing the temperature, whereas the person who goes off the diving board and jumps in, they find out the real deal very quickly and can make better decisions than you can. I don't understand, and I think part of it's because I'm from a different planet, why so many people want to follow someone else versus charting their own path. That is something that I've always wanted to do. You know, I think part of it, and this is an assumption, is the educational system that prepares you to work for someone versus preparing you to work for yourself. Because there's two phases where you get screwed. The first phase is you can be anything you can. You want to be little Johnny? Little Johnny, Jill. For Naquana, all of y'all, you can be whatever you want. You can. Dream large, dream big. And that goes on from the kindergarten to about the sixth grade. And from the seventh grade to the twelfth grade, <laughs> figure some shit out. You gotta get a real job. You can't be anything you want. You need to be realistic. <laughs> there you go to college and it gets worse. <laughs> sure, paying eighty thousand dollars for this philosophy degree is a good financial bet. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when I think about it, it is no wonder I get so much flack and pushback on the uh, the degree myth videos because, I mean, for a large part, you were not fed the Kool Aid. You had an IV in your arm, and it was it was open full blast on this stuff, but. Your hustle is your hustle, your entrepreneur. And I'm gonna just say this, I'm gonna start saying this because many people get a few things confused. The difference between the hustle and the business is a business is something that makes money when you sleep, and a business is something that you can sell later on because it's above and beyond you. If you have to go in and stoke the fires every day, and if you go on vacation and you make no money, you have a hustle. I don't care if it's eBay, Amazon, or whatever. As long as you continue to have to stoke the fires, put the log on the fires, go cut down the trees, do all this stuff, light fires, you have a hustle. And it, will, it is not scalable. It is not scalable. You cannot scale this shit. Also, another thing that happens is as long as you continue to promote and suck on the titty of third-party websites, you're going to delay, if not temporarily, maybe permanently, your growth on how to start your own business from scratch. It's hard. It's very hard. I think it's a worthwhile pursuit because what you're going to learn, those skill sets are going to be so valuable in so many areas of your life, it's going to be ridiculous. But so many people are putting that off. I have another reason that I think that people are confused. You know, it's going to be very, very touchy. Uh, I mean, it goes back to your upbringing. If you grew up in an environment that was risk adverse, and you know, if you grew up in a single parent household headed by a mother, typically a lot of that shit's risk adverse. Don't do this, don't go outside. Because I grew up in a world where kids were pushed out to explore. And there's a scientific study, I can't find it, I can't remember because I'm driving, that kids who had the most freedom, most freedom as a child, were the most creative. And their self-esteem came in much earlier. Now, if you're like over 40, you remember those days of going down the street, getting on your bike, actually going to your neighborhood, going to the next neighborhood, having a high degree of freedom, and it forced you to mature faster. We live in a world where we have people who are in their 20s bringing their parents to job interviews. I would laugh my ass off at anyone that showed up at a job interview with mom or dad. I would crack up unless they own the company and they were trying to get a contract. That's a little different. But I think that 
so many people that grew up in those environments or if it was a two-parent household and they were spoiled rotten once again damaging it is not going to help you develop the skill sets to be a free person it's just not going to help you do it and i think that is really really a big part of this stuff that's going on because i talk to people i was talking to a consult client the other day and he said something that i i've just have not heard before he said his father would not allow him to get a job his father made him start a business dad psh, my hat's off to you my freaking hat's off to you because if you don't know there's a company by the name of Isle, the hoot hoot origami the asian art form the girl created it she was 14 years old she's 19 now the company did 250 million last year in sales it's peer-to-peer -peer sales her parents, she wanted a car, they said start a business to get your car. She made, uh, I believe, 30000 for the parents who jumped in to help her. These are good parents. These are awesome parents because they're preparing their kids for the real world. Because if you start a business, what does that, what is the fundamental thing that does for anybody? It forces you to talk to people beyond your circle. It forces you to grow up. It forces you to get confidence. It forces you to become a person who can communicate with many different people regardless of where they are. I mean, in uh, in my groups, man, I've got people all over the world. I mean, I got folks in Australia, UK, Africa. Our, I mean, there's folks from all over the world because of the appeal because everybody, and I will say outside of the United States, entrepreneurship is something that many people want a piece of. There are people who are literally packing up the family on the llama and they're heading down the mountain to come here because they know they can get that entrepreneurial spirit that they can't get in their company. I mean, this country has a robust infrastructure for entrepreneurship. There's no other place like this in the world. There's places that are working, and but there's no place that has this level of entrepreneurship that you today can turn this video off sit down come up with an idea start executing and this time next year you've got a business that's supporting you and your family it's very few places in the world you can do that very very few places and uh it, it's something i think people take for granted and this is some uh message for uh black men i had this conversation 1988 i believe 1980 1989 uh, with a guy I worked in the lab with. We were both in the military. I was active duty. He was a reservist. And we had this conversation that black people had two options. Number one, get all the education you could, master's degrees minimum, or start a business. And I agree with him at the point. From what I've seen now, the, the, the degree, no. Because the degree thing prepares you to work for someone else. And as we know, those jobs for working for someone else are rapidly disappearing. So I am revising my opinion of that. And if you are a black male, your best path out of uh, the matrix is to start your own business. For you, because black males have a higher level of unemployment. I think it's like 38, 40%. That's it. That's all you got is to get off your ass, as Outcast said in that wonderful song, get up, get out, and get something. You have no choice. And in some ways, that's a good thing because if you, if that is, if you realize your back is against the wall. If you don't realize your back's against the wall, you feel that you have many choices that are not available to you. Because I have people in my group from all walks of life. And essentially, Black, white, Asian, Hispanic, male, female, everyone is being put in the position to get fucked. Everyone. And, you know, when I say this, you know, there's people like, well, you know, black folks have it worse. And I'm telling you, I talk to a lot of people from a lot of different cultures and everyone is in the bent over position if you don't have some steel undies on to get fucked. This new system does not care about gender. Well, actually, that's a lie. It does care about gender, but that's changing too. It cares about gender more so than anything, especially if there are kids involved. But this new system is fucking everybody. Everybody. 
you know, everyone goes like, hey, white males got this wonderful life. And for a long time, shit was lovely. Uh, it's not like that anymore. So if you are like, got your lips stuck out, once again, looking at how someone else is living and have no exposure to those people and don't really know what's going on, you're making assumptions and you're building your angst on assumptions, which makes a total dumbass out of you. But as a black man, you need to start a business. I don't care if it's removing fucking bottles. You need to have the ability, the ability to produce income without a job. It is a necessary skill set that I think that you're going to have to just uh, acquire. Because I look back at my situation. I got out of the military. I had a skill set. I had a skill set that allowed me to get a job in the medical field during the height of a recession. So, you know, I was good, so I thought, but there was always this thing that I can do more and I can do more and I can do more. People are like, you're high-minded, you got a good job, you should just stick with it. You just work hard and, you know, work your way up the ladder. I mean, fuck that ladder. I don't want to work my way up the ladder. I want to fucking build a spaceship and build my own fucking galaxy. That's where my mindset was. And it creates problems because when you're dealing with someone who lives a fear-based life, you scare the shit out of them with talk like that. That's crazy talk. You are, you're talking about voodoo. You're talking about uh, witchcraft. You're talking about uh, these things that just don't really work well in their mind because they live on a fear-based continuum of life. Everything is, if I do this, how bad am I going to get hurt? Versus if I do this, how bad am I going to win? How large am I going to win? How successful am I going to win? That stuff is not part of the current internal dialogue. So when you come in there with your hustler mindset, your entrepreneur bent, you scare the shit out of people. They're like, oh, no, we're going to need to talk about you. We are going to need to shut you down because you talking crazy talk, my friend. You're scaring the children. You know, they're walking around talking about they want to be CEO, bitch. <laughs> have that. We can't have that crazy talk. We just can't have it. It's just not, uh, it's just not produce, conductive, or conducive, conducive to what we're trying to do here, which is keep their little minds enslaved. But seriously, I want everybody, and that, that is my mission, because having a business save my little ass. If I, the things that I went through, if I was had a job, Oh my God, it would have been worse. It would have been worse. It would have been much, much worse because by having a business, I had a place to go that was mine, that I was able to control, able to bring into the sphere or kick people out of the sphere with a level of authority that you just will not get anywhere else. I begin, I'm beginning to understand why people with money build compounds. I understand that shit. Now you should be like, yeah, I guess they don't like people. No, it's somewhere. It's because they can go somewhere and be themselves and not have to worry about the uh, regular folks with their pitchforks because they can't stand the fact that these folks are different. I get it now. I totally get it. But everyone, I think, having your own business, having that that sense of ownership and pride that comes from accomplishment is just something that uh, I think everyone should experience. Because I I'll tell you a quick little story, and uh, it's a dirty story. That's why it's going to be here at the end. It's a very, very dirty story. Uh, I was having a conversation with a writer. And I'll be the first one to say that my writing needs work, and I'm growing. That's just life. I mean, it's growing, you know. And she was just like, "Well, you can do this, and you can do that, and well, have you ever thought about this?" And this person, who's a writer, is a great writer, brilliant writer, but she has a job, and I don't. So I take that as a factor, as one of the variables when I factor up my decisions about what she says. And she said, "You know, 
if you did this, I think if you gave it a good two years and just didn't put anything out and just kept working hard and rewrote and, you know, got yourself a peer group, then I think you'll be a brilliant writer. And I said, you know what? Let me tell you what my writing has gotten me in this current phone. And I agree with you. It needs work. My writing has granted me freedom. I am out of the matrix. It's granted me freedom. That's the most important thing that I've gotten from my writing. Number two, it's granted me opportunities that I would never ever gotten if I hadn't wrote that first book and released it when I did. Opportunities that still blow my mind. Friendships that with people that I've never would have met. Uh, thirdly, my writing has skyrocketed my self-confidence to a level I've never had in my life. When you sit in a basement and you bang out some words and you create a book that sets your life on fire, you can't help but being confident. And fourthly, my writing has gotten me a lot of pussy. There is something about when you can put together some words. Oh my God, Jimmy. Look at those legs part. Don't care. Hate me. I don't care. And I told her that, right? And I said, just like that, hate me. And she's just like, you're so base. And I'm like, I'm so right. Because this came from taking a chance. This came from willing to suffer the areas, uh, the arrows of uh, criticism. Oh, I fully expect a lot of criticism to come this year because I'm doing new shit and I'm pushing real hard. I'm, a, I'm expecting it and I'm counting on it because if you're not getting criticized, you're not pushing hard enough. You're uh, just playing it safe because anytime you push the envelope, there's people who are like, oh, we don't like this. We want you to... Uh, continue to do the same things you were doing because we're comfortable with that level of production and now you're scaring us with this new level of production and you're making me realize what a fucking wimp a little sorry ass bitch I am because I am just not really living my life that I am just existing I am not taking advantage of these things that life has to offer I'm just here um, sucking up oxygen and wondering when the next episode of my favorite television show is coming on because I'm bored. You know, when you are someone like that, when you're a producer, you scare people like that. You scare the shit out of people like that. They can't deal with it. And just, you know, I'm telling you, you may fail. You may fail. Uh, stuff may go sideways. People may talk about you. But when you push through to the other side, when you get that good experience, you will be irrevocably altered and you, it'll be hard for you to get a regular. It'll be damn near impossible for you to get a job. You may become unsuitable for a job. It, it may be one of those things. But just, uh, you know, food for thought. You know, create your own hustle. Try something new. Recognize that anything that you're thinking about making money, there's someone making money. It's not so much the thing, it's the technique and the person behind the technique if that means anything to you. All right, this is Glennon. I'll see you on the other side, the good side.